All right, let's dive right in and create our first Android project using Kotlin. So I'm going to go ahead and say start a new Android Studio project and I'm going to call this one just learning Kotlin. And my company domain here is going to be petersommerhoff.com. So it's already going to automatically change the package name to com.petersommerhoff.learningkotlin. And if you don't have a domain yourself, you can just also use example.com if you don't want to publish anything. And this is just for learning Colin. So this is not something you're going to publish. So feel free to just use example.com here or your own domain name if you have one. Now you can already click here, include Colin support. So let's go ahead and do that and then click next. And I'm going to go ahead here with the default settings for now. So just targeting phone and tablet and API level 15, which refers to Android version 403. So I'm going to hit next again, and I'm going to use the empty activity as a default. And also I'm going to generate the layout file for that screen automatically. All right, so now you can see there were some things that Android Studio had to install for this, and it's going to do that automatically. So no worries about that. And I'm going to go ahead and say finish. And you can see it also sets up the project info for Gradle. And Gradle is the dependency manager and also the build tool for Android. We're going to talk about that in a bit more detail later on in the course. But for now, you only need to know that this is also the place where you can say that you want to use Kotlin in your Android app. Now, since we already said include Kotlin support, it should do that automatically. But we're going to see what it actually changes in the Gradle file so that you can also do this yourself if you ever have to. All right, you might get a message here from your firewall that you want to allow Java to make changes or to have access. So I'm going to allow access for Java here. All right, and now once this finishes, it's by default going to come up with a tip of the day. You can use those tips if you've never used IntelliJ or Android Studio before. They might be quite helpful and you might actually want to go ahead and look through some of these tips and maybe remember one or two every day until you really know many of the really useful and powerful um, features and keyboard shortcuts that you can use. But for now, I'm gonna say, I don't wanna show those anymore. I already have some experience with IntelliJ and Android Studio, and I'm gonna close this. So let's put this into full screen here and also remove some of the, well, overhead that we have in this um, user interface. So if you've never used this before, this can be quite overwhelming. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide all these items on the, on the borders. So you can click here in the bottom left corner to toggle those. And I'm going to actually remove them for now. Next, you can see on the left side here, you have your project structure. And actually there's a problem at the moment because Android 25 or the SDK doesn't seem to be installed or you can find it. But Android Studio is always going to come up with a suggestion as well. So here it's going to say install missing platforms and then try to sync the project again. So I'm going to hit OK or hit on that message in order to let it do what it suggests. And I'm going to accept the license agreement for SDK 25. And then it's going to go ahead and download and install all the required dependencies that it needs for this project. All right, so after downloading and installing, can hit finish again. And it's going to try to sync the project again, which basically means it tries to see if it can find all the dependencies that it needs in order to build this project and then also run it. And you can see up here in the status bar, what IntelliJ or Gradle is currently doing. And sometimes also gonna come up with suggestions on top here if there are any problems. So for now, let's wait to see if the project syncing now works for Gradle. So basically, if we have all the dependencies we need. All right, so this looks good. The message is now gone. And you can see down here that it says that it's currently running the build, which means it's compiling all the files and trying to create an APK file that can then be run on the Android device. All right, so that seems to be also finished by now. So now let's take a look at what we actually have here. You can see we have our main activity 
but you can also see that it's already cut in code. So you can see it's main activity.kt and not .java. And you can also see that, well, the syntax is a bit different, right? And we're going to talk about all this in detail, of course, in the upcoming sections. We're going to learn about all the Kotlin basics, about functional programming in Kotlin, and object-oriented concepts in Kotlin. And you're really going to be able to apply all those to your apps in Android. And it can really make your code not just much more productive, but also much more robust and safe and also much more concise as you're gonna see in many points along the course. All right, so this is now basically our first Android app with Kotlin already, even though it's just the empty template. So let's actually try to run this one and see how it looks in the emulated device. All right, so you can see when you click on run at the top here, it's gonna say there are no devices yet because we haven't set up any emulated devices yet. The thing is you can actually emulate a lot of Android devices and you know there are many different ones and you can see here a list of devices you could possibly, well, emulate with this. So there are phones, there are tablets, there's also Android Wear and even TVs. So for now I'm going to go ahead with a phone and more specifically I'm going to use a Nexus 5X. This is one of the Google phones, so I'm gonna select that, hit next, and then it's gonna ask us what kind of Android version basically you wanna have on that emulated device. So I'm just gonna go here for the recommended, the latest one, so Android O, and I'm gonna, well, let's say install that on this um, emulated device. So install that. And you can see, yes, you do need some time to really get everything set up at the start, but once you have everything set up, now the next time we want to create an app, of course, you don't have to um, create or set up the emulated device anymore. You won't have to download this SDK anymore, but only if you ever want to have, let's say, or test on another device, of course, you're going to have to set that up again. But the work that we're doing here is something we don't have to do every time. So don't worry too much about all the installations we have to do now. Once you have this all set up, it's going to be a lot easier next time. You can just use this device for all the apps you want to use or create in the future. And if you think about it, it's also actually quite easy here to just be able to install all this right from Android Studio. So it's, I think, really made in a very comfortable way in order to get all this done. So let's now have some patience again and wait until all the downloads and installations have finished. All right, so again, once this has finished, just click Finish, and we have this installed. So now we can select this Android O here, hit Next. You can give this a name, but the default name is actually very useful. So it's a Nexus 5X running API 26, so Android O. And that's basically all you have to do. So hit Finish, and then it's gonna come up here and we can just select this device in order to run our app and view our app on this virtual device. So hit OK, and then it's gonna start up the Android device on your machine, on your PC, so you can really test this on many devices if you want, if you just install all of them. Now, of course, it takes a while for this emulator to start, just like if you have an Android device, it also takes a while for Android to boot up. So I'll just give this a minute to really start Android here, and then we can actually see our app and it's actually gonna start automatically. Especially when starting this for the first time, it takes a bit longer, but the next times you wanna start this, it's also not gonna take quite as long as uh, the first time. So you can see now how Android is booting up here. You can also see it's a quite new version of Android. After a bit, I've actually never seen this uh, boot up screen yet, because I don't have an Android O device. So it's interesting to see also. All right, so now you can see Android has booted up and is ready to go. And you can also see that our app will be started automatically. So that's how it works when you click on Run. So you can see we have our app with the title Learning Kotlin, and it has a text field showing Hello World. So yeah, that's already our first app that uses Kotlin. Of course, we haven't actually done anything ourselves yet, 
but you can see how strong the support is here for Kotlin in Android Studio. Especially in Android Studio 3, you don't actually have to install the Kotlin plugin separately, but instead you can simply use it as you go. You can just click include Kotlin support. Otherwise, you can also use Kotlin or include Kotlin later on. And actually, when you go and use Kotlin code or create a Kotlin file in your project, it's automatically come up with a suggestion to enable Kotlin support. And also, if you have an existing Java project, you can just go to any Java file, go to code, and then convert Java file to Kotlin file to see how the Java to Kotlin converter will then well convert this file and how this would look in Kotlin. So this is an interesting way to see how your Java files or your Java code would translate to Kotlin. Of course, it's not perfect, it's just an automated generator, but it's still very useful to also get started with the language and see how concepts map. All right, so that's all for this lecture. It looks like we're good to go. We have Android SDK, we have a virtual device that we can use in order to run our apps on. In this case, we chose a Nexus 5X running Android O. So now we're actually ready to go. So first thing we're gonna do in this course is in the next couple of sections, we're gonna look in a lot of detail at Kotlin first and then apply those concepts to Android apps. And this way you're gonna see first how powerful Kotlin is and also learn how to use it in general, not just on Android, you can also use it in basically any other place, for example, anywhere Java is used. But then of course, we're gonna focus on Android and go into the details of how Kotlin can be used to enhance your development workflow when creating Android apps. So that's all for this lecture and congratulations on your first Android app using Kotlin.